I stand here today with the belief that if one changes thought, uh, one changes everything. For all the things that we enjoy today, uh, there is much that we owe to people who believed in the possibility of a new future, who dreamt, who persevered, created, and delivered on the promise of entrepreneurship. And I can't think of a better way uh, but to begin my talk by acknowledging and celebrating some of these pioneers and visionaries. I don't need any introduction. It has changed the way we uh, live our life, the way um, the information in the world got organized and the way we consume it. It's a great equalizer in many ways that it is used not only in Western countries, it's used across the globe. It's used in urban areas, it's used in rural areas, it's available in so many languages, and it's truly been transformative. Social media revolution, again, we don't need any introduction. Uh, perhaps all of you use it. Uh, you use Facebook, you use WhatsApp, you use all of these tools, and they have transformed the way we live. And again, great equalizers. When they started, what were their mission? Today, this company's mission is to make the world a more open and connected place. Then there are examples. There are companies which tried solving the problem of information poverty in the world. You have uh, Udemy, Udacity, uh, edX, Khan Academy, brilliant organizations and brilliant ideas. They took the best of the academic con content and put it out in the uh, open source way, available for anyone to use across the globe. Some more examples. Um, you see how there's so much happening in the world of financial access, how a bank is getting unbundled. But I particularly want to pick up one uh, organization which is closer to my heart, which is Grameen Bank, which started the movement around microfinance and brought bank uh, to poor people and access to money where they need it. Now, it's very interesting while we look at what's been happening and celebrate all of these organizations which have been built by these um, very inspiring entrepreneurs. They've been supported by very many people to build the organizations that they built. Uh, they've been supported by private equity investors. They've been supported by uh, venture capitalists. They've been su supported by government aids and foundations and various other sources that they could, you know, gather capital from to build the organizations that they built. Let's look at, uh, you know, what's happening across the globe. How we wish that that was the dominant model in entrepreneurship. And that's what, you know, was happening across the globe, but such is not the case. So if you look at the world right now, um, there is intense amount of activity in the entire startup ecosystem. Everyone wants to be an entrepreneur. Everyone wants to do a startup. The governments are talking about it. Everyone is kicked about it, right? Uh, so it's buzzing. The world is moving from an industrial era to an information era. And that's visible in this globe. When you look at the organizations which are raising the most of the money, which are flourishing across the world are the organizations which are playing in the information era. So information era is blooming. Technology is creating wealth at an exponential pace. Unfortunately, that is not uniformly divided across the globe. There are some people who have more and there are some people who have none. So the gap between the haves and have nots is increasing. And why is that so? Let's look at that. If you look at uh, some of these sectors which are hot, uh, there is a uh, lot of money being spent on artificial intelligence, big data, IoT, Internet of Things, cyber security. Um, there is money being spent on fintech, um, artificial reality. And these are the sectors which are hot right now. Let's look at uh, the world's most valuable startups. Uh, these are organizations which have equity funding in uh, billions of dollars. This market cap is, again, billions of dollars. Uh, Uber, Airbnb, I'm sure some of you use these organizations in your day-to-day -day life, the way you go about doing things. And these are the most valuable organizations right now. So this is all very exciting. But the world is not perfect. What the world could be and where it is right now, there is a huge gap. Another picture for you to understand. Now, great, these are the top 10 healthcare startups in the world. They all have hundreds and millions of dollars of funding. But, and they have funding from, again, venture capitalists, private equity, hedge funds, uh, 
and they all are very valuable, doing extremely interesting kind of work, but they benefit select few. Select geographies and select set of people are getting benefited by this. Look at uh, another example. These are the fintech startups coming out of New York, just New York, right? And you see how the world, if you were to look at a picture of the world and you see spikes in where the startup activity is, where the money is, what's happening, this is what you'll notice. That there are some places where the money is being spent and people are benefiting, but there are other places in the world where money is not there and there is no benefit coming out of it. So, interesting, I mean, why is this happening? What's the reason uh, that we have this, uh, you know, ironic situation? Despite all the progress that we have made, and despite, uh, you know, we live in a materially advanced world, we are science and technologically much better off uh, from where we were, we all lead very comfortable lives, um, it's a globalized world, but we still have to deal with problems of hunger, uh, inequality, uh, suffering, and why is it that we have to, you know, still battle with these uh, problems? My submission is that there is a dominant focus on economic activity. There is so much focus on productivity, return on investment, and things happen where the money is. Ideas and action is where the money is. Um, and given our complete mindset, uh, we have a lopsided world right now. Market uh, funding, market opportunity and funding, deciding entrepreneurial activity is like uh, tail wagging the dog. It's a classic example of that, in my opinion. You look at uh, the money which is being spent in hot sectors, so-called hot sectors. So we have this contrast where we have a world uh, which is, of course, not equal. Uh, there's a gap which is ever widening between haves and have-nots. Uh, we have lots of issues around, uh, you know, hunger, security, poverty that we have to deal with. And there is money being spent on all of these things. Online security and fraud detection, artificial intelligence, smart sensors, drones, augmented reality. Do you see a disconnect? I see a huge disconnect. What makes these sectors hot? It's a self-fulfilling phenomena. That's how bubbles get created as well. Money is being spent because there is technology available to do cool stuff in them. There is a lot more innovation possible, so everyone runs behind it, right? And when money is being spent in these areas, it creates activity, and the resultant activity makes it further hotter. So it's a self-fulfilling phenomena, and that's how bubbles get created. When one decides to be an entrepreneur, how should one zero in on an idea? What should motivate an entrepreneur? Or how should an entrepreneur get inspired by real needs and real problems, right? Shouldn't we be solving for uh, access to healthcare, access to education, clean water, uh, secure lives? Shouldn't we be talking about sustainability, about renewable energy? But such is not the case. We are actually not looking at that. So what should actually uh, be the goal of entrepreneurship? Is entrepreneurship about uh, making more money? Or is entrepreneurship about uh, being more committed to the impact that you can create? The possibility of creating a new future. Delivering a better world. What is uh, supposed to be an entrepreneur's goal? To actually uh, make good lives incrementally better? or deliver a better world overall, which is equal for a lot of people. Entrepreneurs are celebrated people because they take initiative, they're not afraid of risk, um, they dream, they create, they work extremely hard, and they try and deliver on the promise. And entrepreneurship, at some point in time, I don't know how it became about all about wealth creation. And we created this very interesting divide in entrepreneurship. So, when it became a lot about wealth creation, some people who were not happy with the way uh, things were progressing came around and created this whole social entrepreneurship movement. And we created this divide between entrepreneurs and social entrepreneurs. By doing that, we also abdicated social entrepreneurs of their accountability to create larger common good, which is actually extremely important. So, if we were to think about uh, creating entrepreneurs like those, uh, then what should we do? I want to share a quick example. I was recently invited to Startup Weekend in Dharamshala uh, to judge some of the startups 
lot of young people came together and they were hacking ideas over 48 hours to create something new. I was very impressed by one particular idea, uh, which was by uh, two youngsters. Uh, there is a problem in the hills that water, carrying water from one place to the other place is extremely difficult. Uh, pipes, water pipes occasionally get broken and when they get broken, um, it takes a long time to fix them. You don't get water and obviously it's a challenge to just get them fixed. These people came up with a simple smart solution um, that you click a picture, it gets geotagged, time stamped and through an app gets mailed to the public works department. And they know exactly where the problem is, when it happened and then they can come back and you know, solve it. I was blown away. There was no revenue model. There was no wealth creation. They were not thinking scale. They were thinking impact. Right? So if we need entrepreneurs like those, then what should we do? Where should we go? I guess we need people who view the world differently, right? I guess we need people who are driven not necessarily by the financial gains, but they are thinking beyond self, they are conscious, and they have a larger common good in mind. And to be able to develop those abilities, I think entrepreneurs need to uh, think about solitude, self-reflection, inner drive and solitude is extremely important because in the current world, the way we are connected, our ideas and thoughts get marinated very quickly with the popular information flows and what's available out there. And that's how entrepreneurs start thinking. So we really need people who can show the courage to go against the tide. And in the end, I would just like to propose that why can't entrepreneurship be a mission to fight the world's fight and not just be a mere business opportunity. Thank you.